the seeds and potential brackets are out for the upcoming Olympic team trials in Texas on April 2nd and 3rd. In this video, I'm going to be diving into the best storylines and potential matchups from the seeds that were just revealed. This is my reaction to the upcoming Olympic team trials seeds and brackets. Now, I'm going to be using two different articles in this video to keep referencing and going back to. One of them is by Intermat, which have all of these seeds right in order. The other is by Flow Wrestling, looking at what the Olympic trials brackets will potentially look like. They're not officially penciled in and done yet. Those actually won't be released until Friday, So, but I did want to give the credit where it's due for each of those articles linked down in the description below. So my reaction to each of these, first of all, at 57 kilos, uh, it, it's pretty interesting because Thomas Gilman ended up getting the top seed here and it's not that crazy that he ended up getting the top seed and Dayton fixed the number two seed but what's going to be interesting there is if those two guys both do make the finals because there is some bad blood there I mean they've wrestled in the past at finals x uh, where Dayton Fix has beat Thomas Gilman. They've wrestled internationally, where Thomas Gilman, I believe, has the most recent win over Dayton Fix. That will be a very interesting matchup, should that happen. But look, I mean, Gilman also, he has losses to the number four seed in Seth Gross, as well as the number 10 seed in, uh, in Zach uh, Sanders, excuse me. And so this bracket is by no means like, Thomas Gilman's bracket done done and away with it. There's going to be some exciting competition, especially now with Spencer Lee pulling out and and it was no guarantee that Spencer Lee was even going to make the Olympic team. I mean, he probably would have been my pick, but listen, there's a lot of excitement here at 57 kilograms. I mean, just look at this bracket here. Now, as you look at this bracket, you see that we're not going to necessarily get the Suriano and Fix matchup that, I mean, that I was definitely hoping to see because these two have wrestled in college, but I wanted to see them wrestle in freestyle, but we are going to be getting the number five Nick Suriano against number four Seth Gross match in that is going to be a thriller. Now, Suriano recently has one of the best wins in this entire bracket in the uh, DeGlane, which he won back, I believe, as I was in January, uh, within a bracket with Thomas Gilman and with Vito Arujo. He won that bracket, and he's going to be a... I mean, he's just a massive threat in this bracket. Could be running into Gilman in the semis should he continue to win. Joey Colon is another guy I want to mention here. The number six seed is just seems dangerously low seeded. He put up 21 points on Seth Gross back at Beat the Streets last year, and, and that's one of the best things about these brackets is as we look into some of these seeds is we have seen a lot of these events happen now, which we haven't always seen in the past because of the freestyle events on Flow Wrestling, on Rockfin, on other wrestling media platforms. So we actually have seen a lot of these matches, which I absolutely love to see. Uh, we also, the other guy I want to mention here is the number seven seed and Nathan Tomasello, who we haven't seen Russell in quite some time, but I mean, he's just a powerful force, especially at 57 kilograms. You better believe that NATO is going to have something to say in this bracket at 65. This is arguably the bracket that uh, most people are looking forward to. I mean, at least for me, this is the bracket I'm probably looking the most forward to at 65 kilograms where Zane Rutherford received the top seed. No big, big surprise there. Zane or Yanni Diakamahalis got the number two seed. And we all know the Yanni and Zane drama that happened back uh, at Final X and trying to make the world team back in 2019. The craziness that ensued there. The other things that have happened in this bracket, I want to mention, uh, James Green, you know, a, a top four seed right here, number four seed. Yanni is a win over James Green. That's partially why they are seated where they are seated. Jordan Oliver, tough guy, number three seed. And another guy, James Green, looking at him, I mean, he is somebody who you also shouldn't overlook in this bracket. Had a, had a solid performance at Flo's eight-man bracket. And Joey McKenna. I mean, you want to talk about Joey McKenna and looking where some of these guys may land up in the 65 kilogram bracket with Joey McKenna and James Green. I mean, a first round matchup, but you also got to remember that Joey McKenna teched Seth Gross and that should be interesting. The other interesting guy here is Nick Lee, who we just saw win an NCAA title at 141 pounds, but how is he going to transition over to freestyle? We've already seen that some of the national champs who automatically receive a bid to this bracket in the Olympic team trials are actually not going to be competing in 
this event. Uh, one notable guy I, I haven't seen here is Roman Brav Young. I, I wasn't really surprised he's not going to wrestle with the Olympic team trials, but uh, you know he's not in it. Frank Molinero is in the mix. A lot of Nittany Lions. You know, speaking of Nittany Lions, Frank Molinero is in the mix here at 65 kilograms has Evan Henderson potentially first round and, and who just won the last chance qualifier with an upset in the finals and Evan Henderson is somebody who you should definitely not be overlooking at 65 kilos and the if we get to 74 kilos okay 74 kilos a couple of interesting things happened uh, this is where some weirdness happens and if you're not familiar with the process let me kind of explain some of the things going on here so because Jordan Burroughs is a uh, returning uh, world team member, like he he gets this spot in the finals because of his accolades, past accolades. He gets this spot sitting in the finals. He's qualified the weight. Uh, Kyle Dake is sitting in the semifinals, but these other guys, Jason Nolf get, got the one seed. It was actually Isaiah Martinez who got the number one seed, but he pulled out of the event. James Marcella received the number two seed here at 74 kilos. And Chance Marshall just had a phenomenal last chance qualifier. Who he just looked solid, uh, like nobody was really touching him. He, he didn't let Vincenzo Joseph put up any points against him in the finals of the last chance qualifier over the weekend. But Jordan Burroughs, I mean, he's obviously sitting in the best spot, okay. And as an Olympic gold medalist, as a multiple time world medalist, one of the questions that some people are asking is, as he's sitting in this spot, is is he? Is he too old? Is he past his prime? I'm not saying I'm asking that. I'm saying some people are asking that, and I like to ask the question that other people are asking. I don't think so. I think he's still pretty much in his prime. I mean, Jordan Burroughs is the face of United States wrestling, and so it'd be crazy if he didn't make the team. And Kyle Dake, I mean, sitting in the semifinals, but you got to see who else he has here, and the, this bracket here, actually, that I have up is an old bracket when Isaiah Martinez was still in there, but I just wanted to get you kind of an idea of what that would look like because Cal Dakes still would have to go through Thomas Gant, David Carr, Vincenzo Joseph, or Chance Marsteller. Uh, and out of those guys, I'm probably giving the edge to Chance just because of how well he looked at the last chance qualifier. And Dake is just a serious threat to Burroughs, though. World champ, Henry DeGlane champ. Defeated, remember when he defeated Frank Chimizo in last year's Flow Wrestling card? One of the first Flow, one of the actually it was the first Flow Wrestling freestyle card. A lot of fun. We would have got the Imar and Vincenzo Joseph rematch had Isaiah Martinez not put out of the event. But at 86 kilos is another one that this is honestly like David Taylor's weight to lose. And he doesn't have like a, a lock on the finals like a Jordan Burroughs does. Or as you'll see with the Cal Snyder, he doesn't have the lock on the best two out of three. But I think he's sitting in a pretty good spot at the number one seed. David Taylor, t to me, he is the clear number one. I mean, impressive victory over Miles Martin in last year's flow card. He defeated Jordan Burroughs in the flow card. Now, granted, Burroughs was giving up some weight, but still, you got to mention it. But Zahid Valencia is somebody who didn't beat Jordan Burroughs, but did have a relatively close match to him that I don't... If you didn't watch that match, you'd just see, oh, okay, yeah, Burroughs beat Valencia. Big big deal. I wasn't surprised by that. But if you actually watched the match, you, you saw that it was a kind of close match. It was an 8-5 to five match between those two. And I, this is a bracket that I'm not overlooking Zahid Valencia in. Gabe Dean, who just won the last chance qualifier, I mentioned... Chance Marcel looked just solid, looked tough, looked tough there at last chance. Like nobody was scoring on him. Gabe Dean is a very similar situation here. Uh, you know, Nate Jackson, he beat him in the finals like seven to two or something like that at in the last chance finals. And watch out for Gabe Dean because coming out of retirement to just put the beat down on some guys had a great. A full wrestling bracket with his eight-man bracket. Look out, Gabe Dean. And best potential. Oh my gosh! I mean, look at look at this bracket. Look at this bracket. First round matchups. You could have Carter Sirachi, recent NCAA champ, against Bo Nickel, a former Penn State national champ, number eleven, number six seeds in round one. Now Sirachi actually had a win over Chance Marshall on the Rockfin card. You may have forgotten about that a couple months ago. Nate Jackson and Aaron Brooks. First round matchup. Gabe Dean and Miles Martin 
another potential first round matchup. And the reason I'm saying potential is, like I said, these brackets aren't 100% official. There's still some things that could change depending on, you know, if a guy misses weight or, or whatever that is. But I, I did want to put that out there at 97 kilograms, similar to similar to the other weight, uh, is Kyle Snyder sitting in the finals. Jaden Cox is sitting in the semifinals. Now, Jaden wrestled this past year, and he, he didn't look that great. Uh, against Nate Jackson on the flow card. Now, with that being said, he was recovering from the virus, and apparently he got hit real, real bad, and that really hurt him. And, and so I hope he's recovered since then. But, I mean, Cox, what? He won, I think it was two world titles in a row without giving up any points. Ew, the man. David Taylor, or excuse me, uh, Kyle Snyder and Jaden Cox, if those two wrestle... I I I don't know who I'm picking. I I don't. And I'd like to know who you are picking there. But let's look at some of these other competitors. Colin Moore and Hayden Zilmer, the top two seeds here. And let's look at the bracket. And this is another one, actually, where the bracket's a little bit messed up. Uh, they have Jason Nolf at the number two seed. That's actually Hayden Zilmer, who should be at the number two seed. But thank you to Flo for putting this together. Great article by J.D. Raider. Uh, Kyle Snyder, I mean, what, I think... Youngest Olympic champion in United States history, uh, wrestling wise. Final X competitor, Kyvin Gadsden versus Ferrari. I know everybody's looking forward to seeing Ferrari wrestle again, or maybe you aren't, depending on your point of view, how you feel about AJ Ferrari. But I'm interested to see how he's going to do here. Hayden Zilmer and Ben Honus, that's going to be a great one. And, and Fargo champ, Braxton Amos, who was one of my. Honestly, like most impressive wrestlers I watched at the last chance qualifier, young guy, a Fargo champ, is going to have Colin Moore first round. So if he's able to pull that win off, I mean, he's sitting in a nice little route to potentially make the finals at 97 kilos. I mean, at least the challenge finals until, you know, but, but an interesting route. I, I did want to talk about that. And then at 125 kilos, the big boys, the big boys that everybody wants to see. And yes, Nick Udowski did get the number one seed because he qualified the Olympic weight for the United States. So you have to actually have to qualify each weight for the Olympics. And there, there are a couple weights uh, right now between men's freestyle, women's freestyle, and Greco-Roman that aren't. I believe there are three weights that still are not qualified yet. But one of them is, is 125 kilograms with Nick Gwizdowski. And Gable Season has the number two seed, even though Gable Season has a win over Gwizdowski at Flow Wrestling's event last, I think it was at December in the RTC Cup, when Gable pretty much went there to wrestle Gwizdowski, ended up getting the win. And Mason Paris was upset that he was kind of, he said that Stevenson was running from him because they didn't wrestle. And, and that started that whole beef. And that's the exciting part here, is because let's look at these brackets. Let's look at these brackets because who could we be seeing potentially in the semifinals? Gable Stevenson and Mason Paris going at it again. Yes, that is a match that could be happening once again. But I'll tell you one guy who I'm not counting out. And he is the number six seed, and that's Greg Kirkfleet. Now, I didn't... I didn't expect him to do a crazy ton at the national tournament this year. After I saw him wrestle this season, I thought he's great. I think he's still going to do, be a great Penn State wrestler. And he did have a great national tournament for Penn State, placing higher than his seed. But he's a multiple-time world champ at the cadet and junior levels. And if he's able to beat Mason Paris in the first round and get to a Gable Stevenson, Never know. Could see him making some noise there. He's somebody I'd definitely be looking out for as it comes to the Olympic team trials over the upcoming week on, on April 2nd and 3rd. Make sure you're watching Friday and Saturday. Which bracket are you most looking forward to? Like I said, for me, it's it's probably 65 kilos, but just overall. But I really want to see like a Jordan Burroughs and Kyle Dake. I really want to see a Jaden Cox and Kyle Snyder match. What are your most anticipated matchups? Please let me know down in the comments below.